Amen. Good morning to you all. It is a good Sunday and uh, there's just so many things to talk about, so many things to thank you for. Uh, you know, Steve just kind of hit the tip of the iceberg in light of the last two weeks of very busy ministry here at the church for Vacation Bible School and then uh, this uh, last five days at the fairgrounds. Uh, uh, there's been a lot going on, and while all that was taking place, the school lunch program was still going on. While all of that was taking place, we were still making hospital visits, and surgeries were happening, and people were ill, and uh, just all of the things that have make church, church, kind of come to a conclusion in Romans 16 today. And I don't know, well, I can't, I, let me take that back. God has this amazing sense of humor that today we're in Romans 16, talking about relationships with one another because that is the lifeblood of the church. Without each other, we have no ministry. Without each other, we have no momentum. Without each other, we have no... We have nothing to offer. And Paul concludes this amazing book this amazing letter that he wrote to a church that had some issues, a church that had some divisive things going on, a church that, that loved God and knew God. He wrote this letter to them so that they could continue strong. And I hope that today you make the connection between Romans 16 and community church. Because Romans 16 is about us. It's about you. I won't be named and you won't be named, but yet we're in this book. Every single one of us will be connected to some part of what Paul talks about today in Romans 16. And during the last two weeks, there has been person after person in groups of people after groups of people who have stepped up, who have been leaned on by me, my wife, and a number of you others I've asked and you've given unreservedly. And there's just no better feeling in the world than to be part of a group of people that when an email goes out or a text goes out, somebody is unable to fill a shift at the fair, within 15 minutes to a half hour, it was, the need was met. And we got a kitchen full of food for next week's school lunch program. We just had a team come back from the Ukraine We've got five teams scheduled for Courage Worldwide Triathlon, not to mention the individuals from this church that are paying $225 as a fundraiser to help build homes for women and young girls that are rescued out of sex trafficking. Is there anything you all can't do? I mean, it's amazing. And I stand here today tired. I'm wore out. I felt all of 62 the last two weeks. Every bit of 62 and then some. But man, my heart is full because God is an amazing God and you are listening to this amazing God and stuff is happening. So anyway, Father, thank you for the joy of our salvation because God, apart from our salvation, we can't do anything. It is Christ living in me. It is Christ living in us that enables us to submit our agenda to you and then pick up your agenda, your kingdom agenda, Father, to reach out to others. So Lord, in these next few minutes, bless us. Father, would you bless every church in our community that's preaching Jesus Christ's gospel this hour. Father, would you be with those at the fair that are doing work right now in your name Father, for the smiles on the faces of those green-shirted people. Father, for the handshakes and hugs that are being extended there. And Father, for the handshakes and hugs that have been extended here, right within the walls of this room here. God, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. One other last amazing story. You remember how much of the uh, Vacation Bible School props that we got from the church in Sacramento? And then we added to them here at Community Church. And then Doug Branch drove them all the way up to Lincoln City, Oregon. We got news this week 
that the church in Lincoln City is sending it on up to Washington State. So, so uh, you know, who knows where that stuff will end up, man? It's only styrofoam. Surely somebody's going to break it sooner or later. I don't know. But anyway, so by way of review, we, um, we are finishing up 17 weeks of being in the book of Romans. This letter that Paul wrote to a church of Jewish and Gentile believers who were established in the city of Rome under the persecution of Rome, they were doing all they could to promote God's kingdom agenda. And in Romans, Paul talks about doctrinal issues. Here's what I need for you to believe. And then in the second part of the letter, he says, here's how you should behave based on what you believe. And then the last couple of weeks, we've heard him talking about unity in the church. Stay away from division. Don't let that happen to you. And then, as I said, he talked about unity. Last week, he talked about living our lives as an acceptable offering to God. Paul wanted to present those under his authority as an acceptable offering to God. He didn't want any casual Christians. He didn't want any partial Christians. He didn't want any lazy Christians. He wanted to present people to God holy, acceptable, all in, all the time. And that should be our goal as believers. Jesus didn't die a little bit for you on the cross. He died all for you on the cross. So why would we choose to live a little bit for Jesus rather than live completely for Him the same way that He died for us completely? And then lastly, we saw that Paul's future included more ministry with more people. Paul basically ministered within that red circle, the the Mediterranean world, Asia Minor. Paul planted numerous churches there. But he had bigger dreams and greater desires, more ministry with more people, and he wanted to go to Spain. He wasn't done. And community church, we may not go to Spain, but there's more ministry to do here. There's a city called Westwood. There's a community called Chester. Not that there's not good churches there. There's a community called Aden in Big Valley in Termo, in Ravendale, in Likely. We need to be all in all the time so that this gospel of Jesus does what it did for us, for other people. So, today Paul closes his letter and he acknowledges his co-workers. I love to be acknowledged. I got a little bit of pride issue. Of course, not as big as Pastor Floyd's, but, you know, I... But, but we all like to be acknowledged, right? It, that's just our nature. And Paul acknowledges those who serve the kingdom. But there's a difference in being prideful and being acknowledged. These people that Paul's going to list served the kingdom without a peep. But yet Paul was aware of their contribution. I could start in the front and go all the way back and name your contribution to the kingdom of God. It's needed, and we stand together in that. As I said, my wife, the last two weeks, um, she has borne more than any woman should bear from her husband. But she's done it with a smile. I've got people in green shirts that I've asked to step up over the course of the last two weeks, and they have done that. Tony Esparza was with me in VBS, 68 years old. 68 years old, had a t- blue, he was in charge of the blue team, him and Caleb. Took the blue team five nights. This week, Tony's not missed, I don't think he's missed one morning or evening of cleaning bathrooms. I, I appreciate that. I'm blessed by him. I'm blessed by you. I'm blessed by the stories that have come out of the last two weeks of ministry. I'm blessed by the stories of Kirsten and the school lunch program. I'm blessed by the stories from the Ukraine, which you'll be hearing from shortly once we get a night established. I'm blessed by by those that were in the membership class hearing some of their stories last week. You all are an amazing group of people, but we're only amazing because of the one we serve. He's the one that gives us meaning and purpose. Without him, We would just be another civic club. 
We would be like Rotary or Kiwanis doing good things for the common cause. But we're doing good things for the cause of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So anyway, with all of that said, uh, you know, Paul knew what I know. Or rather, I know what Paul knew. And that's that you all are essential to ministry. And we live in this amazing paradox where God doesn't need us to proclaim His kingdom, but yet God allows us to proclaim His kingdom. And this is this amazing paradox. We're not needed, but yet we're a necessity. God says, I'm going to let you have a finger in what I'm doing. Oh my gosh. To be part of the work of the Creator God of heaven? He let me have a part in that? Oh my gosh. Aren't we lucky? Aren't we special? Lucky, I shouldn't say lucky in church, right? That's a we're special. So anyway, you need a Bible this morning? Tony's back there. He's got on his green shirt. He'll bring you one because he's still serving. Alan's got some Bibles. Raise them nice and high. Once you get that Bible, turn to Romans 16, not 15. We're going to start with a list. I like a list. I like a list of stuff. Because you know what I've already done on, I, when I'm sitting in my office? I was thinking of all the celebrities that died already this year. Musicians, celebrities. So I, I clicked on celebrities have died in 2016. And already there's this huge list. of uh, I like lists. And I just do. I like lists. I don't like numbers, but I like lists. Pastor Floyd likes numbers. But Paul has a list. And there's some great doctrine in Romans. The gospel is presented in Romans. Paul teaches us amazing truths in the book of Romans. But what we see in chapter 16 is that the Bible is not done in a vacuum. This book is relationship after relationship after relationship after relationship. And it starts with a man named Adam who walked daily in the cool of the evening with God Almighty. A relationship. And God looked at Adam and He said, this relationship, as wonderful as it is, Adam created by me, walking with holy God in the cool of the evening, God looks at this scenario, He says, that's not good enough. I'm going to bring a woman into the scenario. And when God brought Eve into this relationship, Adam was blessed and Eve was blessed. And then, and only then, did God say, this is very good. Relationships. Why are relationships important to us? Because God Himself exists in a relationship. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So why would not this relational God want relationships for His children? But yet in our world, we see these relationships breaking down. And it's not because we're divided. These relationships are breaking down because of the evil and wickedness in men and women's hearts. And I have a solution for that. I don't have a solution for the division in our world, but I have a solution for what's at the core of that division. And His name is Jesus. And He transforms thinking, and He transforms hearts, and He transforms behaviors. So, with that said, let's look at the list. Paul was not only a builder of the church, but he was a shepherd as well. And he built relationships, whether he was in Corinth or Galatia or Ephesus or in Rome or in Jerusalem. Paul was constantly re building relationships. And you know who that reminds me of? Jesus. Wasn't he amazing? And Jesus went into town. He healed some people, fed some people, built relationships, and many came to faith. Jesus was the consummate relational guy. How could you not like Jesus? I mean, he, he went to a couple of parties in Scripture and people came out of the party transformed. Jesus just knew how to build bridges to people. He never coddled people. He never lied to people. But he told them the truth about themselves in such a way that he endeared those people to him and they wanted what he had. Jesus offered grace, forgiveness, and a relationship with his heavenly Father. So let's begin. Look at the people Paul acknowledges. Romans 16, verses 1 and, to you, 1 and 2. I commend to you 
How many of you enjoy a good commendation? I, any of you work at a place where you get like a letter in your file of good work? You ever get a commendation at work? How many of you have been like me and you like got a letter of reprimand in your folder? Yeah, hey, hopefully mine balanced out. I'm not quite sure. But he's commending our sister Phoebe, and we believe that Phoebe was the letter carrier where Paul was at in Achaia, and she took the letter to Rome. So I commend to you, I could give you a commendation about this woman. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church at Centria. That's a seaport town east of Corinth. And Paul says, welcome this woman in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor. This woman is special amongst the servants of God. And then he says, help her in whatever she needs. Verse 2, help her in whatever she needs. Why? And here's Paul's reason for Phoebe being special. She has been helpful to many and especially to me. In her Christian walk, in her day-to-day -day life, she laid down her agenda, she picked up the agenda of the kingdom of God, and she lived according to that agenda, and in doing so, she blessed many, and she was an especially a blessing to Paul. Why? Because she obediently laid down her stuff and picked up the things of God. You want to be great? Lay down your agenda and pick up the, the agenda of the kingdom. And then Paul greets his co-workers in Rome, 28 people in total. Remember, he's never been to Rome, but he's familiar with 28 of them. He calls 26 of them by name. And for me, it tells me the importance of relationships in terms of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. Christianity has reached the year 2016 not because of corporate headquarters, not because of billboards, not because of advertising, not because of a strong board of directors. Christianity has entered the 21st century because people like you shared your faith with other people. And here we are. We're only one generation away from extinction, right? Right? If our children stop proclaiming the gospel of Jesus, it ends. It stops. But yet for over 2,000 years, God has faithfully overseen named people and nameless people in terms of promoting the gospel of His dear Son, Jesus. You see, we would have never heard of any of these people outside of their connection to faith. If it wasn't for our common faith, I wouldn't know Jim Dunn. If it wasn't for our common faith, I would have never traveled to South America with John and Brenda Payne. If it wasn't for our common faith, why would I want to be friends with Steve Gaither? I mean, look at that haircut, man. He's a guard through and through. Why would I want to be with him? It's, it's the gospel that brings us here. It's a gospel that connects us to one another, irregardless of what we've done, where we've been, how we look. It's the gospel of Jesus. That's the only greatness in all of us, isn't it? It's the truth of Jesus Christ. So verse 3. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. You can read their connection to Paul in Acts chapter 18. He says, they're my co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. Co-workers. They stand with me side by side in the ministry of Jesus. We also know that they did tent making together. Paul met Priscilla and Aquila on his second missionary journey. He made tents with them. They had to come to Corinth because the Christians were kicked out of Rome because Claudius had made a decree for all Christians to leave Rome. Kind of makes me laugh about, you know, we're going to ban Muslims, we're going to ban this, we're going to ban that. Claudius had no problem running Christians out of Rome. So we know how the Muslims feel. We were driven out, you know. Christians have been driven out of all kinds of places by the decree of Rome or whatever. So give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ. In fact, they once risked their lives for me, and I'm thankful to them. We don't know that story of how they risked their life for Paul, but he does, and he says he's thankful for them. And so are all the Gentile churches. So somehow Priscilla and Aquila, they had an outreach, they had a ministry, they touched many Gentile churches. Verse 5, also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. 
they open up their home for church. Because in the first century, they didn't have big buildings. They didn't have big ministries. The church in Rome was a, was a, a, a community of small house churches. And so he says, greet them and greet the church that meets in their home. And then he says, greet my dear friend, Eponidas. Dear friend, in the Greek means one loved by me. That word loved in Greek is one agape by me. Greet my agape friend, Eponidas. And look at his distinction. The first convert from the province of Asia. That's some distinction. Wouldn't you like to be like the first convert ever in Lassen County? But Eponidas, he had this distinction. In Asia Minor, as Paul began to travel to Asia Minor and establish churches and proclaim the gospel, Eponidas was the first guy to respond. He was the first fruits of the gospel in Asia. And Paul says, greet my dear friend. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become a Christ follower. Then verse 6, give my greetings to Mary, to Miriam, this Jewish woman, who has worked so hard for your benefit. She worked hard for the church in Rome. I don't know if she took care of children. I don't know if she was teaching a women's Bible study. I don't know if she was a barista. I don't know what she was doing for the church. But Paul says, man, she worked hard for you. And you know what, community church? There's men and women in this church that work hard for you. And you might be one of them. Give my greetings to Mary, Mary who has worked so hard for you. Verse 7, greet Andronicus and Junia. Theologians argue whether it's two men or whether it's a husband and wife. We won't pick up that argument this morning. But we'll just look at why Paul acknowledged them. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews. They were with me in prison. So you see, Susanville is not so unique after all. So if you know a couple sellies here at Community Church, then you're, you're doing the right thing here, right? I'll never forget years ago when uh, a guy had just got really, he just got out of prison. He came to Community Church, and one of our COs were, was sitting there, and, and the guy just got out of prison, and he looked up, and he said, Hey, hey, you were up on cell block three on day shift, weren't you? He says, Yeah, hey, you're so-and-so. 27, 15, 79, or whatever his number was. <laughs> anyway, but, but you see, we're no different. Look at the, give my, ye, 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 greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who are in prison with me. They are highly respected among the apostles, and they became followers of Christ before I did. Paul acknowledging these people who were in, re, in relationship with him. Cellmates. They are highly respected among the apostles, and they became followers of Christ before me. Verse 8, greet Ampliatus, my dear friend. There's that word, one loved by me in the Greek. Greet my, greet Ampliatus, my agape friend in the Lord. I love him with a sacrificial love in the Lord. Verse 9, greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and greet my dear friend Stachys. There again is that one loved by me. I love these people. Why? They are significantly connected to the gospel of Jesus. And Paul understands that without relationships within the kingdom of God, within the church of God, the ministry doesn't go forward. So community church, let me tell you, tell you, thank you, that you are connected to each other and in the way that you're connected to me and in the way that you're connected to the community and in the way that you're connected in your neighborhoods that we collectively together have accomplished much for God's kingdom in this community. Again, that's not being prideful. I just want to give acknowledgement as Paul gives acknowledgement. Your wisdom, your grace, your mercy, your sacrificial giving of time, your sacrificial giving of finances. Thursday, 29 teenagers will go to camp with five adult leaders. You, you do that. You can clap. It's okay. It's amazing. Paul had this network of friends. Each church has a network Susanville Nazarene, Susanville Assembly of God, Honey Lake Assembly of God, Lake Almanor Community Church, Westwood Calvary Chapel, 
Calvary Chapel of Susanville. We're not intimately connected to them, but we are certainly connected to them because they work with us and we work with them. And in doing so, the gospel of Jesus Christ is proclaimed to this community that needs Jesus so very much. Verse 10. Greet Apelles. He's a good man whom Christ approves. And the idea there in the original language says Christ approved him through testing. This is a good man. He's been to hell and back and he stayed faithful to Jesus Christ. He was committed to his faith on the good days in the very bad days whatever his testing might have been greet apelles he's a good man whom christ approves and gives my greetings to the believers of the household of aristobulus aristobulus don't know much about him but we know that the brother had church meeting in his house greet him and the people in his church for me verse 11 greet herodian my fellow jew and greet the lord's people from the household of narcissus Now that tells me that the household of Narcissus was divided. Greet the Lord's people in Narcissus' household because not everyone in Narcissus' household is the Lord's people. But greet the believers that are in his house. Verse 12, give my greetings to Tryphena and Tryphosa. Tryphena and Tryphosa. We believe that they were twin sisters. They'd have to be, right? Tryphena, Tryphosa, of course. Because here's what their names mean. Tryphena means dainty. So if you want to punish your son, name him Tryphena. (laughs) Tryphena means dainty, and Tryphosa means luxurious. So if I'm choosing, I'm choosing Tryphosa, because luxurious fits with me, you know, I just... But, but, But they were sisters, maybe twins, and he says they were the Lord's workers. In in the Greek, that means they toiled. They toiled for the Lord. Didn't complain, but again, laid down their agenda, picked up the agenda of the kingdom, and served God faithfully. Served the church in Rome faithfully, and in doing so, served Paul faithfully. And then, greet also dear Persis, who has worked so hard. See, Tryphena and Tryphosa, they were the Lord's workers. But Persis, she was a hard worker for the Lord. That means she toiled even more so than Tryphena and Tryphosa. She was a very, very hard worker for the kingdom of God. And then verse 13, greet Rufus. Now we think this is the Rufus that's mentioned actually in, in, in Mark 15. The man of Cyrene that carried the cross for Jesus. We think Rufus was his son there. You can look that up, Mark 15, 21. So greet Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own, and also greet Rufus' mother, because she's been a mother to me. She was a mother to Paul. What does that mean for an adult male? just means whatever Paul was lacking in a motherly sense, that this dear woman poured into his life. I think about this when I think about those of you who pour into those children in the nursery, holding them, nurturing them, singing songs with them. Those that pour their lives into the children, whether they be pre-K or kindergarten children, or whether they be fifth and sixth graders. Nurturing children. She was like a mother to me. That's a pretty good thing to be remembered for, isn't it? Being a mother to somebody. And then the next um, names in chapter 14, or verses 14 and 15, most likely they all had one thing in common. They were house church leaders. Let's look at verse 14. Give my greetings to Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who meet with them. So there we get the idea that they were house church leaders, that they had a group of folks meeting in their home, worshiping God, opening the Word of God, spending and doing life together. Because isn't that what relationship is? Spending and doing life together. 
That's what friendships are made of. Commonality. Whether our children are the same age, whether we are work colleagues, or whether we enjoy the same extreme sports. It's our relationship with each other that draws us together. Because you know why people go to church, don't you? Because their friends are there. You get that? You understand? That's why we go to a particular church because our friends are there. In fact, I met a couple people this morning that are here because their friends are here. So you understand the importance of relationships. We can't undersell relationships, especially in a small community like Susanville, where relationships are really everything, aren't they? I mean, my goodness, we get a paper every Tuesday that tells you who got a ticket. It's about relationships here. And sooner or later, you're going to bump into people, you're going to meet people, and you're going to see them at the most awkward times. But that's who we are. And I love that fact, that in this community, I can walk down the main drag of the Lassen County Fair, and it takes me 45 minutes to move 15 feet. I love that. 27 years I've invested here. Not because I'm a big deal, but 27 years I've been faithful to the call of God on my life, and I love the fact that it takes me two hours to go to Walmart. Most of the time. Some days I need to get in and out. So if you see me doing this, that means I'm in a hurry. That means Dana needs the milk right now. So, Verse 16, 15. Give my greetings to Philogius, Julia, Nerus, and his sister, and to Olympus, and all the believers who meet with them. These people are connected. These people have relationships within the community. Understand that within the body of Christ, we're going to have close friends, and we're going to have acquaintances. Not everybody, we all don't have room for a big circle of close friends. But we can have connections, we can have acquaintances, we can share stories. And so Paul says, greet all, greet each other in Christian love. Greet them with a holy kiss. Isn't it a shame that we got so politically correct that we stopped doing that? Oh, you don't ever want to ride in a car with a woman by yourself, something bad will happen. Well, not unless you're a moron. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So last night I did a wedding. I did a wedding of a daughter of a friend, someone who's close to me. And when I was leaving, I kissed him on the head and told him I loved him. That's not unusual, is it? We can do that, right? Greet each other with a holy kiss. Why? Because we're endeared to one another, aren't we? I hope you love me the way I love you. And I hope you love God even with a greater love. Verses 17 to 20, Paul says one more time for the record, don't be divisive. Verse 17, and now I make one more appeal. I've greeted my friends. I've taught you the doctrines of truth. I've asked you or I've showed you the way to behave. And now he says, I got one more appeal. And it's not to love God more. I have one more appeal. It's not to pray more. But in closing, Paul makes this appeal. My dear brothers and sisters, watch out for people who cause division. They break the unity. They destroy the relationships that we have worked so hard to nurture and sustain. Watch out for people who cause division. And then number two, watch out for people who upset others' faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from heresy and false teachers. When you hear something that doesn't sit well with you, it doesn't sit well with you for a reason. You know the truths of this book. You know the gospel of Jesus Christ that he was God in the flesh, born of a virgin, lived a sinless and perfect life, died for the sins of the world on that first Good Friday, then resurrected on 
the first Easter and it's coming again. And whenever somebody tells you a gospel different than that, you run away from them or you kick them out the door. Verse 18, such people who cause division and such people who teach false doctrines. Such people are not serving Christ at all. They are serving their own personal interests, which is the exact opposite of those 28 people Paul named. Those 28 people that Paul named, they are serving the interests of God and the kingdom. Anybody that's not doing that, then shy away from them. They're serving their own personal interests by smooth talk and glowing words. They deceive innocent people. But every they, look at this, But everyone knows that you believers in Rome are obedient to the Lord. Isn't that a great compliment? Watch out for false teachers. Watch out for those who cause division. But you, you believers in Rome, he says, you know what it means to be obedient to God. This makes me very happy. See what blesses Paul's heart? An obedient, faithful church. You know what blesses my heart? An obedient, faithful church that builds bridges to the community that doesn't yet know Jesus Christ and is willing to, over the last two weeks, contribute and donate over 2,000 volunteer hours. That's what you did. Amen. 2,000 volunteer hours. Not to mention those who couldn't do that, but were praying for you as you did that. Not to mention those who couldn't do that, but financially they could write a check so that we could do that. We've all got a part, you see. And then he says, this makes me happy. I want you to be wise and doing right, and I want you to stay innocent of wrong. And then look at this in verse 20. I love his exhortation. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Did did you hear what he said? The God of peace will soon crush Satan under the feet of those called community church. That he will be crushed under the feet of obedient and faithful followers of Christ. We win, and then may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Now Paul names his associates. We need to move on. He talks about Timothy. You know Timothy. Paul wrote two New Testament books to him. He was a young pastor. Timothy, my fellow worker, he sends greetings to you in Rome, as do Lucius, Jason, Sosipater, my fellow Jews. And then here, I, Tertius, the one writing this letter for Paul, because remember, Paul had eye problems. He couldn't see to write very well. He asked God three times to take that away, and God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. I'll give you a writer every time I need you to do write something. So I, Tertius, I'm Paul's scribe. I'm the one writing this letter for Paul. I send my greetings too as one of the Lord's followers. And then verse 23, Gaius. Gaius says hello to you in Rome. He is my host, and he also serves as host to the whole church. What a Gaius. Hosting all of Paul's associates, taking care of their material needs, taking care of food and shelter so that they can do the work of God's kingdom. Thank you, Community Church, for opening your home to a small group, to any and all that have needs when we ask. Gaius says he's our host and he serves as host to the whole church. Erastus, the city treasurer or public works official, he sends his greetings and so does our brother Cordus. Verse 24 is typically now been removed, put made down into verse 27 because it makes more sense in verse 27. So now let's look at Paul's closing benediction, verse 25. Now all glory... To God who is able to make you strong. All of you. All glory to God. He's able to make you strong. Just as my good news says. What was Paul's good news? That Jesus Christ is Lord. 
This message about Jesus Christ has revealed God's plan for you Gentiles, a plan that kept secret from the beginning. In the Old Testament, the gospel of Jesus is a little bit hidden. In the Old Testament, we see God dealing with the Jews. But when we move into the Old New Testament, Jesus Christ for the Jew, Jesus Christ for the Gentile, Jesus Christ for the sins of the world. Verse 26, but now as the prophets foretold and as the eternal God has commanded, this message is made known. It's proclaimed to Gentiles everywhere so that they too might believe and obey him. You see, we can never get away from, obedi- from belief and obedience. Belief and o- Oh, I believe in God, yes, but are you obedient to God? Because that's the proof. It's in the pudding. The angels believe, or rather the demons believe, and says that they tremble. But the demons are not obedient to what they believe. They tremble because they know that the choice they made eons ago was the wrong choice. Church, we are called to believe and obey. And in obedience, we lay down our agenda and pick up the agenda of God's kingdom. Now that's not saying that you leave everything you're called to do. If you've got a business, you run your business, but you follow that kingdom of gender. If you're raising children, yes, you raise your children, but you follow that kingdom of gender. If you've got a career, yes, you pursue that career, but you follow that kingdom of gender. Understand what we're talking about here. Verse 27, all glory to the only wise God through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Period. What a glorious note to end on. Worship team, why don't you come up? We need to finish here. It's easy to gloss over names in the New Testament. It's easy to gloss over names in a genealogy. But understand that every dotted I in every cross T in Scripture has significant meaning for those that follow Jesus Christ. The temptation now is the same as it was for the Christians in Rome. You see, the Christians in Rome, they wouldn't be remembered in the books of history. But Paul mentioned them because they were significant to God's kingdom. And by and large, when they write the final history for Lassen County, Community Church won't be named. Pastor Rick in his tenure at Community Church won't even be etched into the walls somewhere. I'll be forgotten. My work will be forgotten, as will all of yours. Our thousands of hours of volunteer work, our financial investment in our community, our school lunch program won't make the history books. But Paul lists those people, those people who face the same fears that we do, those people who face the same testings that we do, or those people in Rome who face the same limitations and insecurities that we face. But let me tell you, let me tell you why they continued to build the church. Let me tell you why we continue to build the church. Because even though our names aren't in the history books, Our name's in a different book. You know what it's called? Lamb's Book of Life. And that's our motivation. Whether or not I get in the Lassen County Times, I could care less. Although I'm blessed when all of you are in that. Not in the police blotter. (laughs) But, you know. But why did those Christians who were under persecution do all of this because their names were recorded somewhere else and it wasn't a history book it was the Lamb's Book of Life so community church may you and I continue to honor their memory by being as faithful in our day as they were in their day so that we can be in Lassen County's history books so that because our names are in the Lamb's Book of Life. So what's our reminders this morning? We must continually be reminded about God's truth. We must always know what God's truth is, and we must hold to it and follow it. 
any Christian service or any good thing that we do, it's a result of God living in us. And people are the true fruit of the gospel, aren't they? People. And here's the question. Is my ministry and service for the kingdom of God accompanied with close and abiding relationships with others? If it's not, I pray that you make some friends. I pray that you get involved in some corner of ministry in this church. I pray that you deepen your roots of relationships with one another. We're going to stand and sing a song with Randy and the worship team. I hope you connect this song with what we just talked about. I pray that you do.